Hello, I'm Mark Fleming, the Chief Economist at CoreLogic, and welcome to our summer 2014 housing update. One of the uh, concerns in the housing market today is whether credit is constrained or people don't have access to credit. We simply ask the question, is credit too tight? Well, it could be that it's uh, tight and nobody can get a loan. It could be just right and it could be too loose. But really, the problem here is when you ask and say that something is too tight or too loose, we have to define what's normal, and that's actually quite challenging. Well, let's appeal to the most obvious source that most people look at, and that's the, uh, the government uh, loan officer survey. And you can see over time here that there was a significant contraction in credit terms. Loan officers were saying, yes, they were tightening credit in large degrees as we went into the financial crisis. And only very recently have we seen a loosening of credit very modestly, um, as, as uh, indicated by those in the loan officer survey. But this doesn't tell us the relative, awareness, uh, relative level of where we are. We know that it's looser now than it was six months ago in some segments according to the survey, but we don't know what the established normality is. So we took, a, took the idea of looking across the spectrum. Being, cr uh, being tight credit is actually a number of different dimensions. You can think of credit worthiness in terms of FICO scores or credit scores. You can think of credit worthiness in terms of the amount of down payment or the LTV, the debt to income ratio and the ability to pay in terms of uh, arm shares, the types of loan products. There's a variety of ways in which we can define, in fact, all of them collectively define whether or not credit is being made available or not. And in this slide, we'll take, for example, the share of credit scores below 620. The hexagon indicates an, in, an index level of 100. So we went back to the late 1990s, which is really where we find most normal levels of housing market activity and mortgage, uh, mortgage lending activity, and said, so what was the share of, of credit scores being given below 620? We indexed that to 100. And then we compared current levels of credit scores below 620 with a year ago um, in that index basis. So if the index is 50 relative to 100, it's half as much as the baseline of 1998. You can see here that credit scores obviously are very, very tight relative to the norm of the late 90s. But in LTV space, you see a very different story. We're doing a lot of high LTV lending, whether it's FHA or Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac high loan uh, lending programs, which are available to first-time home buyers and others. You can see that the LTVs are actually a little bit looser today and even a year ago than they were um, in the late 1990s. The ability to pay or create sustainable payments as measured by DTI is not quite back to normal. It's a little bit tighter than normal, in part due to the qualifying mortgage regulation, but also the mortgage industry has simply moved back to its good old-fashioned standards of front-end and back-end ratio lending in the 28 to 33 range for both of them. You can see that we are requiring uh, low and no documentation uh, lend, uh, loans, or we, we had been allowing more low and no documentation loans. That's in part because HAMP and HARP refinance activity actually is classified as low and no documentation lending. And so, in a sense, I consider that a loosening of credit. We had special programs that allowed credit to be made available to those who otherwise, in a traditional sense, would have not been there. Since the contraction in those, uh, in those business lines has happened, you can see that over the last year, low and no documentation lending has declined. And it's certainly right now below what we would consider normal levels of the late 1990s. Arm share is the same. We don't see as many adjustable rate mortgage loans. So we've lost that flexibility of loan product in the, in the credit space. And then obviously, we look at broker shares. The influence of brokers in the marketplace are usually an indicator of more credit volumes or more credit availability being made when brokers are being used as a channel for lending. And right now, they're certainly not. In fact, there's a very, very small share of brokers in the, in the business as compared to the late 1990s. So you can see each one of these dimensions today. But then the question is, how do we really boil it up into one single metric? And so here, we appeal to. Uh, principal components factor analysis to basically reduce the dimensions of these and make one measure over time that shows the expansion or contraction of the credit. We baselined it in 1998, which is our normal world of mortgage lending at 100. And you can see in this chart, the expansion and contraction of credit is very obvious. In the early 2000s, there was a refinance boom and uh, credit was expanded with that. As the refi boom faded, uh, we contracted credit, but we didn't contract it all the way back to the late, the late 1990s level. So it was looser after the refinance boom than it was in 1998. You can see clearly the expansion in credit availability or the, uh, or the credit terms being lent, uh, being lent to people in the mid-2000s during the housing boom. 
and then a very, very severe contraction. Basically, it went down to about one-fifth of the normal level at its bottom trough point. Today, we have seen a loosening over the last year of credit uh, back up to an index value just shy of 50, so we're about halfway back to normal relative to that late 1990s period. And I thought what also would be very interesting here is to overlay the serious delinquency rate on this chart because when you expand credit, obviously, you're putting at risk more lending and there's a higher likelihood that people will go into default. And you can see there was a very modest and upward trend in the serious delinquency rate in the early 2000s as uh, credit was expanded. And, and of course, a big, big rise that was uh, the consequence of the large expansion in credit uh, during the housing boom in the mid-aughts. And now that tailing off that's happened because as we contracted credit and new loans coming through the pipe uh, are much, much better from a credit perspective or in this tight credit world, they're just not defaulting at rates that they used to see. So the overall serious delinquency rate is trending downward. So you can see here that we can actually simply answer the question of uh, credit tightness by saying we're about halfway back to normal based upon this methodology. Once again, thanks for tuning in to CoreLogic's housing update. For more information, go to the insights area of CoreLogic.com for our research blog and other housing statistics.